without further ado, let's welcome KSOC to the Savvy Truth. I'm great. How are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you bringing me on here. It's exciting. So can you just tell my viewers who you are, what you do, where you're from? Just give us the 411 on all things you. Yes, for sure. Okay. So I go by KSOC. I have been doing social media for, gosh, since June when everything really kicked off here in Portland. And um, I do have a show on the same channel uh, Thursday nights at 7 Eastern. And that just started two weeks ago. So that's been fun. My platform that I'm running on is We The People. And so what my goal right now is to get a guest on the show from every state in the United States. And so uh, that's been real fun. I've put the message out there and I've had a lot of my followers say they want to represent their states. And I believe I'm like at 41 out of 50 right now. So Wow. And already I'm two weeks you've managed to do all of that. That's pretty yeah. awesome. It's been exciting. I'm staying up to like midnight, like every night, <laughs> getting organized. Well, that's how the best influencers get where they are. They spend yeah. all of their time on it because this is sort of, it's not a way, it's, it's basically a way of life for us, right. us conservatives right. who are being silenced. Right, exactly. There are some mornings I wake up, I'm like, you know, I don't feel like doing this today. And then I see something on the the news or, you know, on my on my phone and I'm like, oh, I got to record something now, you know, so the fire is always there. Just some mornings it, it seems a tad daunting, of course. And as you know, you get the negative comments and the haters out there and, and that can wear on you after a while, but just keep going. You know, haters are just fans who are probably a little bit too jealous for their own good. Yeah, it's true. I would say so also. Yeah, no, so I'm really impressed by you and what you've been doing. It's amazing. Well, thank you. Us conservatives yeah. gotta, us conservative chicks gotta stick together because yeah, absolutely. I would say a few years ago that we are few and far between, but as of recently, I think a lot of us are starting to get very, very tired of big tech, of government, and of everyone right. telling us that there's a glass ceiling hole. Right. There isn't. We're just as good as the guys when it comes to politics. And some of us do it a lot better, might I add. Right, right. I know. I'm with you. Yeah, exactly. I feel like, um, yeah, it's it's definitely the time is now. And I feel like for women also, there's so many women, especially with just what's happened over the last year, where we are more and more confident to be able to voice our beliefs and our opinions. And we know that there is, you know, they say, oh, there's nothing to lose. There's everything to lose now. And so someone like i would say like you and i that have that fire in our belly it's just not an option to just sit down and watch it happen to us so that so what really emboldened you to get started with this because i feel like we all sort of have our little origin stories of what right. finally pushed us off the edge what comment what liberal snyder mark what bill they passed that was just like all right, right fine you want to play hardball let's play hardball yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm married to a police officer in the Portland area and and he was NYPD before. But in Portland, when everything started happening following George Floyd dying while in police custody, Portland was bananas. And for me, at that point, I only had my personal social media. I didn't have any any social media that was uh, public. It was definitely I, I was living my normal life. And I was seeing all of my friends. I didn't have anybody on my social media that I hadn't met in person at some point in time. So I had all these people and I was reading all of my friends, colleagues, all these nasty things about police. And I started just hating all of them. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, this is so unhealthy because these are people that I genuinely like on so many levels. So it was just something just exploded inside me. And I knew that that was not the platform to be heard. And so that's when I created my first TikTok and, and it just kept building. I needed to get my opinion and, and my point of view out there, but not on the platforms that I had maintained that has my actual family and friends on it. And it so as the addiction. wife of a Portland police officer, you have right. to have probably a very interesting look at what's been happening over, wow, it, it's been a year. It's right. been a year now since this whole thing started. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's been it's been wild. I would say it definitely was the craziest um, late May, early June. And then it, 
In Portland, there were riots, consecutive riots, over 120 days. And the only reason that that was broken up is because in the Portland area, we had really bad fires and the smoke quality was unhealthy, like incredibly unhealthy. So the rioters decided to take a break for the sake of their lungs, apparently. But um, but they complained about, you know, tear gas and all of that. But they kept coming back for more every night. But um, yeah, you know, it's it's it became it was like the first 10 days or so I had this nervous energy and I was cleaning until one in the morning and I work in the morning. And so it was just really just crazy. I mean, I didn't know what to expect every night. And then I started shifting, as did my husband. And we were, it just became like the new normal, which is just not it's sad. But it became almost like he was going to Braveheart battle. I mean, they weren't allowed to use anything outside of, I mean, at, some, at one point, they weren't even able to use the tear gas anymore. So they were literally face to face with Antifa. It looks like a scene from Braveheart. I mean, they have their shields and batons going to battle. And so that was wild but it almost became like you're gearing your husband up to go to war every night <laughs> it was um it was a weird switch it was like you go from being like teary and and upset to where you're just like you're like bring it on like you just are ready ready for battle so it's <laughs> well how and, awful is that that it became normal mm -hmm. in your house to I gear know. your husband up to go to war that that should not be a normal in this country I know. Ever and I've seen pictures while that whole Portland thing was happening, mm -hmm. while that Capitol Hill autonomous zone, or did they change it? It was they changed it to something else right after right, that. Right. I saw all the y'all doing this to your own town. You're burning and looting, destroying your own town. And I right. see all these pictures of the aftermath now because it. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like it's sort of chilled out a little bit. It's not completely stopped, but at least <laughs> you guys. I think have your police station back, but right. I mean, it, Portland, y'all city is trash. I just see graffiti and right. destroyed fences and just what they, I, I saw from the Capitol Hill autonomous zone, like their food bank and their medicine and like their clothes just scattered everywhere. Like, yeah, it looks really, really bad. And I'm wondering how are you guys going to clean that up and get it to look back? Like what Portland looks like two years ago. I don't know if that'll ever happen, to be honest. And actually, so Portland and Seattle, just like sister cities. And so, I mean, really, the, the first autonomous zone was up in Seattle. And then they recently had one in Portland because it was it's the Red House. It's the Antifa house. And so, I mean, it, it's just one of those things they didn't they weren't paying their mortgage. So naturally, the bank is going to foreclose and sell off the mortgage, which they did. This man owned this home for a year while these Antifa people are living in it. But everyone's going to riot when they try to evict them so that the rightful owner can move in. So that's why there was this autonomous zone created in Portland. And these officers were actually like attacked by these Antifa people. And I'm not talking. It's not like who you think it is. It's like women. Um, I mean, it's it's not all these dudes like granola dudes. It's like full on like moms are down there. Blue hair dye. Mom. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, like, just. Yeah, I mean, I saw some of the pictures. I saw people bringing children to these things. Yes. Yes. And I saw kids getting tear gas and everyone's freaking out. And I'm like, what, what did you expect right. when you right. brought a seven year old right. to what is literally a war going on on American soil? Right. That was exactly. a dumb, dumb, dumb idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't see it going back to normal. And uh, believe me, I've been asking, I've been like begging to move to Idaho. Just it's like the reddest oh. state in the United States. But, um, you know, it's hard when you're on a police force. You you have to do out, do your time and you can't keep bouncing around. And it's not like a normal job. So so we're, we're luckily we're in the burbs. So we're a little bit further out from actual like downtown Portland. But I really don't see it going back to normal because, you know, the there's a couple of factors. One, the DAs don't prosecute. And so what it does is the police officers, there really isn't like, why? Why are we going to put our neck on the line to go arrest people when the DAs are the office? They're just going to dump it. So it doesn't wow. make sense to even to even arrest people unless it's like a 911, like an actual true like crime and process type of situation. So that's one issue. The other issue is that the, so there's the chief of police, but the actual um, 
what is it? The uh, police uh, commissioner is the mayor in Portland. And the mayor is a spineless liberal who is trying to appease both sides. And now everybody hates him. So when you have a police commissioner who is just completely worthless, your police department's just never going to be able to maintain law and order. And so um, people well, I can't even imagine out. y'all's morale and how that oh, just must yeah. be absolutely just diminished because, okay, y'all go out every single night, possibly risking your life to die for these ungrateful citizens who are literally right. trying to kill you guys. Right. And then when you arrest them, they're not going to get prosecuted. They're not going right. to go to jail. And then the victims of these Antifa BLM thugs, the, the victims of them, they're not going to get justice. Nothing's going right. to happen to them. No one's cleaning it up. No one's trying to Oh, that, that makes me so, so mad. It's infuriating. It's, yeah, <laughs> I get so worked up about it. And uh, my husband's a lot more cool-headed, I would say, but um, I don't know. I think that's I your know. job, though, as a yeah. wife, to get mad for him when he needs exactly. to be. Exactly. He needs yeah. to be a little bit more calm retained because he's the face of the, uh, you said, Seattle Police Department, Portland Police Department. Portland, yeah, yeah. I know. It's All right. Crazy. Well, we're actually going to open up some questions from the audience and they're going to ask you some questions about anything that I missed. So Juan, do you have anything mm -hmm. from the audience? Yes. For the audience is asking, have you both been uh, banned in TikTok? Oh, shadow banned on TikTok? Shadow banned on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want to go first, I mean, yeah. I, know you're I mean, I, your I, I get shadow bans all the freaking time. I have gotten my account deleted multiple times. I mean, they gave it back to me. Thank goodness, because I made an appeal. But I mean, like, you know, TikTok's empty threats. Right. It's lovely. Right. Yeah, no, I just had a video, actually. Um, it I posted a video, and that was probably my biggest rant video, where I felt I saw, like, the veins bulging out of my neck and everything. But uh, they deemed it. It had, what, 180,000 views, and they just deemed that I violated something. And really, it's I was It's always just, hate speech, isn't it? Yeah, I'm like, come on. I'm like, what did I even... I don't even... I don't even say anything anymore. I'm just like, it doesn't even matter. I've had my last account, my original account, I got up to, like, 60,000 followers, and then they shut it down. They shadow banned it permanently, though. So, like, it was like I didn't notice at first. But um, so for, like, three months, nobody could see it but my existing followers. So I eventually just created a new one. But And I'm shadow banned on YouTube. <laughs> so Of course. Yeah. So it's just I just keep going because there's I have dedicated people who subscribe and follow. And I keep getting the message to them. Take it as a badge of honor when big tech shadow bans you or takes That's a video true. down. It means it means that you're doing something right. That's true. I, I like that. <laughs> Duan, do we have any more questions? We do. Are, are you ladies aware of, of uh, court cases going on February 19th to the Supreme Court? Uh, the, the ones about uh, Pennsylvania, Sydney Powell, Michigan, and Lindenwood, uh, George case. I'm aware, okay. but I don't have, I'm not able to talk to it. I don't have enough detail to talk to it. Okay, real quick, let me just let you know. I hope everybody can hear real quick. So uh, the Supreme Court decided to take uh, three cases for February 19th. All of them have to do with election uh mail-in uh, ballots. They're all from Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, and Georgia. And it to, to make to see if the cases, I'm sorry, the changes of the law or the the lack of following the law uh, is is constitutional for every single one of those states. What do you think about that? I think good. Yeah, that's exciting. You know. It's exciting, but it also really ticks me off uh, that it's where we're at in the timeline. And I'm just, I'm still frustrated about how things didn't play out like they should have um, initially, but. No kidding. That's where I'm at. I'm like, okay, great. Yay. But we still have this loser in office and um, I'm not happy about that. And so, and also I try not to get too excited about things anymore. Yeah, I I, I'm with you on that. Like. I was really hyped up after the third. I was like, we've got this. And mm -hmm. then 
No one has a spine. If they do have evidence, no one wants to give it out because, you know, right. Hillary Clinton's hit squad's definitely coming after you next. Oh, yeah. And how come it takes a pillow salesman to have a spine to get out all the evidence, Seriously. all the true, proven, absolute proof evidence? Like, right. Mike Lindell did a two hour show about everything. He's the everything. Man. Yeah, apparently yeah. there's no evidence to prosecute or even have an investigation. Yeah, I, I call right. BS. It's okay. funny that when you say a pillow salesman, it really, it's so true. It's like, yes. really, guys? Like, we have this, the MyPillow.com guy has outworked all of y'all. It's crazy. He's doing all of y'all's jobs and is getting paid right. none of the salary. So, right. <laughs> oh, and who's the David Hogg? He's coming out with a pillow company to... Oh come combat Mike Lindell. Good luck with that. What, Democrat pillows? <laughs> Democrat pillows, I don't, I don't even want to under, I, I don't even want to know what that would be for them. Okay, so uh, Vern Joseph commented that the Por Portland police should be eliminated in favor of a sheriff. Oh, but I agree. I agree. It seems like the sheriffs actually have, not all of them, <laughs> but actually have a spine still. Um, there were so many times when, so the Oregon governor, Kate Brown, when she was mandating that all of these local sheriffs, uh, were, would support the Portland police department. A lot of them said no, um, because of her shenanigans. And so that was like, yes. Um, and it's, it's on one hand, it's unfortunate because my husband pays the, the price for their unwillingness to participate, but but at the same time, I'm like, good, good for them. Why, why, why uh, dig her out of her own grave? Like she, she dug it. She can just figure that out. So I, I agree. I agree. Ladies, uh, this one is from. This is the way from uh, YouTube. Hey, Savvy Kasuk, what's one thing you guys look forward to when all this COVID nonsense is over with? I'll let you go first on this one. <laughs> Is it ever going to be over with? I mean, I hate to be negative, but I'll be honest. The the one thing that the one thing that has really resonated with me the most is I I'm a Christian, and for me, I I'm not perfect by any means, but um, it's been to start reading the Bible again and to make sure I'm having conversations with my kids regularly about. God, Jesus, the Bible. And so for me, it's really just focusing on my walk um, and my kids. So I don't think things are going to get better. I hate to. <laughs> That's my truth, Paul. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. The only thing that did stop is that CNN stopped blasting every single day. 1,000 more people have died of COVID magically once Joe Biden was inaugurated. Right. But I do think this installment of fear about these masks now we have to wear three or four masks at a time <laughs> yeah. fauci still can't make up his mind what we're supposed to do but oh quietly all these doctors and scientists are releasing yeah we were wrong about masks they don't actually work we were we were just a little bit a lot far off base on that but honestly i live in texas no one here is going to deal with their bs or or I should say cow excrement that they're feeding us. I still get to go to high school rodeo. I get to still go to church and hang out with my friends. And the Republic of Texas, if it falls, America falls. And if America falls, the world falls. So right now I'm just trying to hold on to my freedoms in Texas. And I love what you said, though, about wanting to read your Bible and getting closer to Jesus, because I can totally see this mask thing becoming a mark of the beast thing. And I've seen so many Christian teachers and preachers and pastors talking about how this could very easily turn into that. And it's just interesting when you look at, okay, the patent for the coronavirus, it ends in 06, 06, 06. And I'm just like, too many things right now are lining up with the book of Revelations. And I'm really right. over it. And I'm like, all right, hold Jesus close and keep, the Democrats in an arm's length away because right. I'm about done with this. Right. Yeah. Ladies, I have one more question uh, for a quick answer. I'm going. I'm going to uh, kind of combine a couple of questions into one. Uh, first of all, uh, Tevin Strong says uh, he met you in January 6, Savvy. Uh, so he's saying hi. Also, here's a question from. Uh, I'm going to combine this question, so I apologize. Nick Gonzalez and uh, 
uh, Jaden Miller. Today, there was a vote in the Senate just a couple hours ago uh, in which about the constitutionality of the impeachment. It went 55 to 46, I believe it was, or 55 to... Anyway, uh, five Republicans voted to uh, to say it was a con it's a constitutional thing. Six. Right. Six uh, Republicans. What do you all think about that? You can't impeach the president if he's no longer president. Right. And you definitely can't impeach him if you don't have evidence. And your allegations are BS, but that's just me. Right. No, I agree. It, it's it's disgusting. But honestly, I didn't expect anything else. Um, again, I, I I don't even consider myself a Republican anymore. I consider myself a patriot with conservative views. Of the Patriot the Party. Republican Party. Yeah, exactly. The Republican Party has failed us. They are rhinos. And mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to go any differently. It's very disappointing. But honestly, I was mentally prepared for, for it. Yeah, we, we definitely have a bunch of spineless, ballless, rhino Republicans. And <laughs> I have officially decided I'm no longer conservative or Republican. I'm a part of the Patriot Party. The lion is our mascot. And you know what? I've never seen a man with better rhino, with better lion hair than Donald Trump himself. <laughs> right. And you know what? That's what he's always said. He's a disruptor. He's the greatest plumber we've ever had. He's he's our lion. Right. I'm, I'm throwing the elephant out the window officially. Right. I like it. Yeah, I'm with you. Absolutely. All right. Well, Kaysock, it's been awesome having you on the Savvy Truth. We're definitely going to have to have you on again because maybe we could talk about something a little bit lighter than Portland and all of that. Maybe talking about 2024, Donald Trump. Part there you two. go. Exciting. Well, thank you so much. You have a wonderful night. You too. All right. Thank you. I would like to thank KSOC again for coming on The Savvy Truth. You can find me at The Savvy Truth on all social medias if, of course, I'm not banned yet. You can also find me on all right American media platforms on Facebook and YouTube.